Amen. Let's give the Lord Jesus Christ a praise offering. Amen. Amen. He's worthy to be praised. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Just like to say good morning to everybody, and you may have a seat in the presence of the Lord, and we greet everybody in the house and uh, to um, Knoxville, uh, the campus up there, and uh, with um, the lay pastors, um, Victor and Malinka Hall, doing a wonderful job up there. And uh, we just thank God for all of our visitors who are visiting us through by the way of streaming and guests. We trust that something will be said and done today that will encourage your walk in the Lord. And uh, one word can change the whole direction of your life. Yeah. And I tell you what, we serve a true and mighty God. We bless him for that. Um, I, the, the worship and praise or praise and worship was just awesome. And it just seemed like it just getting higher and higher, higher and higher. I saw something last Sunday and I failed to share it, and I saw it again for day this morning. I saw it demonstrated today. Um, I saw uh, Ethan, I saw Jesse, and I saw Maximus. I saw how the Spirit of the Lord was getting ready to overtake them. Amen. Amen. Because uh, this is that which was prophesied back in the day. Amen. That Joel prophesied that. Uh, uh, that the spirit of the Lord was going to come upon us. Amen? Amen. And that your sons and daughters shall prophesy. We're not overlooking nobody else, but that's just what the Lord showed me. And it's just so important to see that, uh, uh, that God is not only moving uh, among us uh, uh, older folks, if you will, or adults, if you will, but he also moving upon uh, the younger people. Amen. And that speaks volume. Amen. Uh, and I thank God that my eyes is, is getting a chance to see that, and I tell you the reason why. We are going through a, uh, we're going through a, a, a time of change, and the reform had already, has already taken place. Amen? Amen? And we've been hearing concerning about the pay, which is the year of the mouth and so forth, and so on, and the mouth really has been uh, uh, operating not only in, uh, uh, in the uh, spirit as far as the kingdom of God is concerned, but also in this earth realm. The mouth has been opening and some things has been declared, some things has been decreed, some opinion has been voiced and so forth and so on. And God is yet voicing his opinion over us. Amen. He's still speaking over us blessings and not curses. Amen. And so, uh, and, and to see since we have started uh, this uh, series uh, talking about uh, the uh, uh, Pentecost revolution, uh, we are seeing some things. We are experiencing some things. On last Sunday, um, the word of knowledge came forth after I got through praying, and I, and I saw somebody, joint was beginning to come back in place, and I, I heard it clink, and praise God, and I got a, a phone call uh, later on from my son. He wasn't here, but his wife testified to him and said that it was her, amen, that the Lord had touched Praise God. And, you know, God is moving. And, and don't get me wrong. Laying of hands is very powerful. Yeah. Amen. But watch this. Because of all the rules and regulations is in place, how many know that the Holy Spirit is not limited in terms of what he can do? He's just looking for the opportunity. Isn't that right? Yeah. And we have so many different accounts to how the Holy Spirit has moved upon people. And this is what we we'll want, and this is what we're going to see. And if we keep make, making our way there, the word of God says, "If you draw Jesus, the word of God says, if you draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you." Yeah. Amen. And in my drawing, I'm not drawing nigh to Him just to get earthly things. I'm drawing nigh to get Him, because when I get Him, I get everything. Right. Isn't that right? Ooh. Amen. Praise God. And so. Uh, and this is a very important time. This is a very critical time. And, and at the same time, I want to encourage this house and those, those of you that are watching, let us continue to lift up Israel. Amen. Continue to ask God to bless Israel. Amen. Praise God. And, and so this is so, so important. And any moment or any chance you get, just worship the Lord. I was looking at Ethan. 
pray, he worshiped and praised God in his own way and praised. And after a while, he just got down on his knees. He didn't say nothing. He just lifted his hands. And we know what that may mean. Lift your hands in awe. Praise God. How old is Ethan? Seven years old. A young man over there dancing in the Holy Ghost and one thing to the other and just praising God and just blocked out everybody and God just gave them their time. Gave them a moment. And this is what we need. We need a tangible uh, manifestation of the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And what that does, it reassures us of our confidence, amen, that we have in him. And it is so, so powerful. And uh, I just bless God for this day, uh, truly. And we're going to um, um, pick up where we left off at, but we need to just kind of uh, go back just a little bit so we can go forward. Uh, this, uh, this portion of the message dealing with uh, the Pentecost revolution is entitled uh, The uh, Introduction of the Holy Spirit. The Introduction of the Holy Spirit. And uh, our supported scripture that we've been reading is from the book of Acts, the first chapter. We're going to kind of peruse through because you pretty much know it by heart and hopefully you've been meditating on it. And it says, and being assembled together, Acts, uh, one four, Acts the first chapter and, fourth, and, and the fourth verse, starting there, I'm sorry. Acts 1, starting at verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said, He, you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye or you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Dropping down to the eighth verse, and it says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Somebody say, come upon you. It's very powerful. If I can just pause right there, it comes upon you. The Holy Spirit came upon Jesus. Isn't that right? Jesus saw how the Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove. John gave witness to it and saw how the Holy Spirit uh, uh, came upon Jesus. And so in the same like manner, uh, when we wait for the promise, which is a gift, we're going to talk about that today. And when we wait, the time will come when the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Amen. Praise God. And, uh, and, uh, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he had spoke these things, while they beheld him, or looking, he was taken up, and a, uh, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And we kind of alluded to uh, last Sunday, the same cloud that was with the Israelites in the wilderness, it's, it was the same cloud that had taken Jesus up, because we, in, in our study, we learned that Jesus was in the cloud. He was in the cloud, amen? All right, in Acts, the second chapter, beginning at uh, verse 1, Acts 2 and 1, it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And something is happening here. Uh, you all are, has been entertaining the presence of God. Amen. You've been entertaining his presence. You've been involving yourself with him. And I'm telling you, you don't go before God without, coming, without leaving with something. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And, uh, and it says uh, they was in uh, one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were setting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it what set upon each of them. Wow. It came on them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. That is so powerful. And just kind of perusing through with the three points that I left with you, uh, we shared, um, let's go back in the beginning. And this is the introduction. Uh, Jesus was, uh, watch this, uh, Matthew's, the third chapter. You see that? Matthew's the third chapter in verse 11. And you're going to see Jesus was, uh, uh, he was setting the foundation uh, for the Holy Spirit um, so that the disciples can be aware that the gift is going to come. And Matthew's uh, 13 
I mean, Matthew 3 and 11 said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. And so John, uh, John was talking about Jesus, that when Jesus come. And so uh, on that account, we see that uh, now when Jesus stepped on scene, uh, we witness that uh, Jesus began to talk about the Holy Spirit. And he said that the Holy Spirit is a comforter. So prior to Jesus with John, John gave the introduction to Jesus. Now Jesus is giving the introduction to the Holy Spirit. Do that make sense? Uh, what did Jesus say about the Holy Spirit? Okay, number one, he is a comforter. He's a counselor. He's a reliever. And if you look at that word comforter, it has so many different definitions that is so powerful. And we see in uh, St. John 14, 16, it says, Jesus is saying this. He said, and I will pray the Father. Isn't that something? I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter because we know that Jesus was getting ready to go, right? That he may abide with you forever. Jesus was only there momentarily. Amen. He was only there for momentarily. So he prayed to the Father that he would send another comforter. And, uh, and John, the 14th chapter, dropped in, dropping down to the 26th verse says, But the comforter, talking about the comforter once again, the counselor, the reliever, which is the Holy Ghost. I like when he put that handle on there. Whom the Father was sent in my name, not in nobody else's name, but in the name of Christ Jesus, he shall teach you all things. And truly, we have witnessed that he is a what? Teacher. And bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Uh, St. John, the 15th chapter and 26th verse. And notice what Jesus said again. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth which proceed from the Father, he shall testify of me. Isn't that something? The Holy Spirit testify of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit uh, does not come uh, to bring uh, any other tidings but the testimony of Jesus Christ. That is so powerful. You know, and I like to say that even, uh, uh, even young ministers, when you're sitting up under another leader, you don't bring no other message than what they ask you to bring. Amen. You don't try to outdo them. You don't try to go in the left field to try to prove that you have a powerful intellect. No, you stay humble and you support and build the ministry. Amen. Praise God. Now, number two is this. He, uh, he is the spirit of truth. He is the spirit of truth, praise God. And notice what it says, and I'm just kind of perusing through this. Uh, St. John 15, 26, notice what Jesus said. And when uh, the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, reading it again, even the spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. Uh, look at the 16th chapter and the 13th verse. Notice what Jesus said again. How be it when he... The spirit of truth is come. He will guide you into all truth. That's all he knows, the truth. Amen. He will not lead you down a path of a lie. Yeah. Amen. He will not lead you down a crooked road. Praise God. But he will lead you into truth. Why? Because he's representing the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord Jesus Christ is representing the Father. I used to pray like this. I used to pray, uh, uh, Father, uh, uh, Father, give you praise, honor, and glory, and pray one thing to the other. And I say, Lord, and I thank you for the glory. Uh, I thank you for the glory uh, uh, that is upon uh, this house that the Lord Jesus, fight, Jesus Christ will be glorified, that in this glory it will bring glory even unto you. Because the glory from the Father to the Lord Jesus Christ, now Holy Spirit. Amen? Praise God. Praise God. Uh, now, uh, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall speak, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. All right. Uh, with that said, the third, uh, the third one is he is a guide and will show you things. He is a guide and will show you things. This is so powerful. Uh, this is some of the things that Jesus was speaking about the Holy Spirit, and, and there are more, but these are just some of the highlights. Uh, St. John 16, 13, again, how be it? 
when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you. Somebody say, he will guide you. So he will guide you into all truth, and he shall not speak of himself. And, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. And this is by the Holy Spirit that give us revelation. At this point, you know, just like during the time of worship and praise, uh, man, I tell you, the anointing was so strong, and I began to see things. And the only way that you're able to see things that is pertaining to God is you, 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 the Holy Spirit is on you. Yes. Praise God. And you are seeing the things uh, that heaven is revealing uh, that would take place, or you're seeing things that heaven is revealing, amen, to let you know that everything is going to be all right. There's so many different ways concerning about the Holy Spirit. So we need him uh, to, to guide us. We need him to show us things to come. And this has come by the way of revelation. Uh, how many of you just, I mean, just in worship and praise, uh, maybe the Holy Spirit began to give you confidence about something or he reassured you about something or uh, something was being broken off of you. Praise the Lord. I mean, the Lord was prophesying through, by, uh, through the worshiper talking, you know, one thing to the other. And so it began to happen. And so the spirit of the Lord was moving by his spirit. By his spirit. And this is what we need. We need more of the movement of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Hallelujah. And, uh, and it also says here, the 14th verse, and he shall glorify me, talking about Jesus, for he shall receive a mind and shall show it unto you. So I need to see what the kingdom of heaven is saying concerning about this season that I'm in, Pastor. I need to hear what the Holy Spirit is is saying, amen, uh, in spite of this pandemic, praise God, I know it got to be something bigger than that because the pandemic is the decor. Yeah. Praise God. And the Holy Spirit is telling me in my house, hey, yes, even though it is among you, but don't keep your eye on the decor because something else is coming this way. Y'all yeah. better, uh, look here. Once, once you know something is in place, you don't have to worry about it anymore. So I know the pandemic is there. Amen. They have already shared with me, uh, have shared with us, you know, the do's and the don'ts. So that's already settled. Amen. Just touch yourself and say, that's settled. Why wrestle with it when it's settled when you know it's there? Praise God. Amen. When, I, when we go to our resident, I know that that house is still there. Praise God. Hallelujah. When I step into the house, it turned into my home. So I know the pandemic is there. I know what they said about it and so forth and so on. We don't make light of it, but that's just a decoy. Yeah. We need to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. We need, we need to believe the Lord for revelation. Yeah. This is where the Holy Spirit, I'm getting ahead of myself. The Holy Spirit, amen, he's here to give us revelation. Yeah. The revelation of wisdom and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. How do Jesus, amen, view this season. How do Jesus, what is Jesus saying about this sin, uh, 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 this season? What is Jesus is telling us what to do, how to pray and one thing to the other? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And I'm telling you, my ears, and I, I just hear all this, I, I just try to stay away from the news until six o'clock. <laughs> Amen. I watch the six o'clock, but I try to stay away from other stuff because what happened, it keep going into my ear gate, ear gate, ear gate, ear gate, and watch this. I'm like everybody else. I have to continue to pull down strongholds because I don't want that word resonating, resonated in my head. And when it was resonating in my head, I say the blood of Jesus will never lose its power. The blood of Jesus will never lose its power. I don't know how many times in a run of a day and at night, uh, uh, how, I, how many times I mentioned the blood of Jesus will never lose its power. I kept saying it to overwrite. Amen. What the enemy tried to put up in the high places. Because I don't want to be like a puppet. No, no, no. If, if, if there's such thing of being a puppet, which I know it's not, I want to be led by the Spirit of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. This is why I tell you, don't fight the system. Look at somebody and say, don't fight the system. Don't buck against the system. Praise God. Don't act like a renegade. Praise God. Don't, 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 don't do these silly things. Amen. Learn the system and allow the Lord to just navigate you in it. Yeah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. 
And so, and so, but this is so important uh, that we be spirit led, that he will show us things and he will show us things to come. And this is so important. It's important to me. There's no way in the world that I can be successful, number one, as a father now since I have grown up. Amen. Amen. As a husband and as a pastor, there's no way in the world that I can be successful without the Holy Spirit. Because you have, we have two dimensions that we're dealing with. We're dealing with earth and we're dealing with heaven. We're dealing with earth, we're dealing with heaven. Earth say do it one way, Holy Spirit say do it another way. And so I need to be able to distinct and know the difference between what earth is saying versus heaven. Praise God, because there's a lot of things that are running to and fro in this earth realm. Praise God. But as we continue uh, to draw nigh unto the Lord Jesus Christ, he, he, he's going to show us things to come by his spirit. What spirit? The Holy Spirit. Praise, pray, I say the Holy Spirit. I want to say Holy Spirit because he is a person. He's not an energy. I'm sorry. He's a person. Praise the Lord. Now, I have down here my notes, notes as I get ready to bring it to a close. <laughs> Y'all pray my strength in the Lord. Now, uh, Holy Spirit is a gift from the Father to those that ask. Now, we talked about the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, and we're going to get all this stuff archived together, uh, 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 Minister Neil. We're going to get it all together. And so, but uh, you have to go back in the archives and watch the first one, and it will bring you all the way up. And so now Jesus is telling us about Holy Spirit, and that is a gift. Look at Luke 11, chapter and verse 13. L Luke 11, verse 13. If ye are you then being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask of Him? It's for the asking. It's, it's for the you can't buy it, and we'll touch on that later on. Praise God! And uh, you know, in the Book of Acts, uh, when the gentleman was trying to buy it. You can't bribe it. Being humble and just ask. The Father is wanting to give it to us because he knows when he give us that gift, it's going to help us to walk successfully in this corrupt world, in this broken system. Amen? Uh, and, and so um, I want to encourage you that as you, as you minister to people, ask them, I'll pose the question and ask them to ask the Father to give them the Holy Spirit. To give them the Holy Spirit and watch and see what's going to happen. There's nothing that you can do to try to muster it up. There's no picks it does. You can't count the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. No, the Holy Spirit will come and it will come upon them and fill them with the Holy Spirit. And you will know because when the Holy Spirit comes upon the person, there is evidence. Yeah. Amen. There's evidence of the infilling or the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Right. Because John baptized them to repentance, but Jesus uh, baptized them with the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. So uh, if we look at St. John, the third chapter, a very uh, familiar passage of scripture, uh, we need to plow through here uh, to bring out more of a point. St. John 3, we probably know, know it by heart. And uh, begin at verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, talking about uh, Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So if a person is not born again, they cannot see what heaven has already sanctioned. Right. And, and see, the substitute is this. Uh, the substitute is, is, um, uh, is, is developing a very powerful intellect. Praise God, becoming uh, very heady and, and, and becoming high minded or uh, 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 I, 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 I almost messed up. But have you have you ever uh, talked with some folks? And this is not for everybody, but you take people uh, 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 who have who have went to the university and they finally have gotten their doctrine. And if they're not careful, if they went into Christian, if they're not careful, they didn't they didn't come out of Christian. Wow. You see what I'm saying? Because now man's supposed to be equal with God. Amen. But the word of God said, but Jesus humbled himself. 
Praise the Lord. And, and, and so uh, progressivism, that's why I don't want to say progressive. You know, they lean more towards progressivism. They lean more towards education. They lean more towards influence and affluence and so forth and so on. And so, and if you're not careful, if you're not careful, uh, uh, that uh, a, a person uh, will, will think that maybe that is the Holy Spirit because it seems like they have an answer to everything. Have you ever just talked with a person, they have an answer to everything? It's nothing wrong. <laughs> I, I thought Dr. Sandra was pointing at me. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. But, you know, but people seem like they know everything. It's not a bad thing, but the thing is this. When, when you are so earthbound, this is all you know. This is all you know. And so, but when you become born again, the Lord now allow you to do what? See into the kingdom. Amen. Amen. See in the kingdom. And we need to see in the kingdom. And especially those of us who are intercessors, those of us who are pastors and leaders. Amen. We need to see in the kingdom so that we can report back here yes. so that we can minister what the Lord has revealed unto us or what he have shown us. Yes. Amen. And every time the Lord have shown, amen, it was always accurate. Praise God. Amen. And you're able to prepare the people for the things to come. Amen. You know, when the Lord began to pull back the curtains or open up the portal or open up the window, amen, allow us to see into the kingdom. This is how we're able to minister prophetically into the lives of people. Yeah. So it is so, so important, amen, to be born again so that we can see into the kingdom. Somebody say, number one, see into the kingdom. Yeah. Glory be to God. And Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born again when he is old? How can he enter the second time into his mother's womb? And be born. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, truly, truly, surely, surely, I say unto thee, are you, except the man be born of the water and of the spirit, now he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So there, there, there is an ascending, glory be to God, this might be leadership stuff right here. There's an ascending and descending that take place. How many times those of you, when, when you know you had to study to prepare yourself for Wednesday night or for Sunday school, or you praying for your family, or you driving down the road, praise God, and you praying, the next thing you know, you, you're at your destination. Yeah. It seemed like the car got there by itself. What happened? You got caught up. Yeah. Caught up in what? In the Spirit of God. Yeah. Where's the Spirit of God? In the kingdom of God. There was a, literally a manifestation that had taken place, but we don't hear too much talk about it. So it's good for us to get caught up. It's good for us to ascend and descend. Uh, Jesus said to Nathaniel, he said, look, you haven't seen anything because I saw you sitting up under the, the tree. He said, you haven't seen anything. You, he said, the time is going to come. You're going to see the heavens open up and you're going to see the angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Praise God. When you see angels, you're talking about the spirit of God. The angels of God is the spirit of God. Ascending and descending. Praise God. Amen. And many times we have, we have witnessed and you have witnessed out there. You've been to church service and seem like the church service is going one way. And then now here come the Holy Spirit shifting it. Glory be to God. And in the shifting, there is evidence God is taking care of business. Come on and give the Lord a praise offering. And this is what we want. We want to be spirit led. We want to be Holy Spirit led. We want to be God led so that Jesus Christ can be glorified and give the glory to his father. Amen. Hallelujah. This is why the worship is so important. I thank God for you all. I, the, the, the musician is so important. I thank God for you all. The Sunday school superintendent, the teachers, praise God, everybody in their perspective place, it behoove us, amen, to spend time with the Lord. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Spend time with the Lord because at any time the Lord might want to show you something, amen, to minister to a person somewhere down the road. Right. I was on a service I witnessed this two times in my life, and this is where, um, this is when I was at the, uh, I call it the home church, where I was raised up at, and praise the Lord, and uh, the Spirit of the Lord had been dealing uh, with this lady. I didn't know it, and so praise God, she, she wouldn't move. I didn't know that she supposed to move. She wouldn't move as the Spirit of the Lord was nudging her, and praise God, and the Spirit of the Lord began to move upon me, and I did something. And the Lord manifests himself. 
And then before service was over with, she says, she said, I have, she say, uh, I have to admit this confession. She said, the Lord was telling me to do blase, blase, blase. And the Lord uh, 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 came before me again and told me what to do. And I didn't do it. And then Minister Gay stood up and he did it. Have you ever witnessed this? Sure you have. Praise the Lord. Praise God. And so, and so this is why it's so essential. It's so important to spend time with God. And, you know, uh, I don't know how many times, I don't know how many times, praise God, you know, when I'm just meditating and, you know, praying, praying for the services. And sometimes the Lord can show you just how the service is going to go. Sometimes the Lord can show you uh, the potential <clears throat> possibility how the enemy will try to come in, amen, to try to cause the spirit of God to wane out. And, and so, therefore, when he showed me things like that, now I got to make war in the heavenly. Why? Because the Lord showed it to me. The Lord showed it to me, praise God. Now I am responsible, praise God, to make war against the hand of the enemy so that the heavenly Father can be glorified in the service. Amen. Amen. A amen. I'm, I'm probably going to get a spanking when I get home. But, you know, there has been time. Now, it's not a bad thing. I, I just do that. Praise God to, to see the expression on your guys' face. But, uh, but there has been time every now and then, uh, Dr. Sanders, she'd be, she'd be about her chores and one thing to the other and da 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 And then and I'd be cutting up with her. I said, okay, where you been? Yeah, you been? I said, did not my spirit go with you? I ain't lying. That's time she felt me. Yeah. No, that's not spooky. Amen. That, that, that's not spooky at all. Because the prophet shared it with, his, uh, with the young servant. servant. Amen. Amen. Did not my spirit go with you? Yes. Praise God. The spirit of God. Yes. The spirit of God. Yes. When I, you know, when I, was a, when I was growing up as a teenager, and man, and I, you know, getting ready to mess up and do some stuff, and one thing to the other, man, boy, I can hear my grandfather. I can hear my grandfather. That's the spirit of the Lord. Yes. That's the spirit of the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. So are we clear with that? Yes. Try it, husbands. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, praise God. But, but it's real. It's real. See we, see, we can't limit the Holy Spirit in these four walls on Sundays and Wednesday night. Amen. This is supposed to be an everyday encounter with the Lord. Amen. I don't have to wait till I speak in tongues uh, for, for 35, 40 minutes to an hour, amen, uh, to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. I need to be, look, the Word of God say, uh, 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 be instant, yeah. in season, out of season. Amen. So you, 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 got, you got to be ready uh, when you don't feel like it, amen. And, you know, and if I can just, uh, if I can just testify, may I testify? testify? Man, I used to love it. When uh, 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 Elder Elect TJ and Pastor Catherine come in because they was the first one the Lord had used me to pour into and to train. I used to love it, man, when I, when I felt that they felt like they wasn't right. Maybe they had a bad night or they had a rough week. And praise the Lord, I used to love to just call them up and have them to minister prophetically in the life of a person. And they'd be dragging, but guess what they learned? They learned that what does my flesh have to do with the Spirit of God? Am I telling the truth? They did it many times, praise God, and that is a good exercise, good exercise. What, what a headache has to do with the Spirit of the Lord? Think about it. As it is in the natural, so in the Spirit, praise God, we have a headache and we still take care of those children. We have a headache we're still on our job, whatever the case may be. So therefore, the Spirit of the Lord, and watch this, and, and, and watch this. And I'll witness it many times. And after they got through, man, whatever was on them, whatever they was dealing with was broke. Wow. That's the tough stuff they went through with. I've been a little merciful on you guys. <laughs> but it's coming. Yeah, that's the word of the Lord. It's coming. It's coming. Why? Because it's perfecting. It's perfecting something in us. It's perfecting something in us. Yeah. To have that relationship with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good. Jesus answered and said, I already read that, except a man be born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter to the kingdom of God. The sixth verse says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, right? Yes. 
and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, are you, you must be born again. You must be born again. I'm going to cut it off right there. It, we must be born again. And see, man, uh, I shared it last Sunday. See, it's more than a feeling. Feeling good. We got to be filled. Yeah. 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 We got to be, you know, and, and you know, and I got to reminisce and I got to think and, and, and allowing the Holy Spirit to bring some, some some old conversation back, going back some years. And watch this. And uh and 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 I've talked with people and and uh, and asked them, do they know the Lord Jesus Christ? I said, yes. I said, how you know the Lord? How you know you know the Lord Jesus Christ? Because when I go to the church, I feel him. Yeah, you're going to feel him. You know, the devil fear and tremor, right? And I'm not, calling, I'm not calling him a devil, but it has to be more than just a feeling. You got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I believe, and don't believe, I know that some people have just kind of toggled with that and wrestled with it because they felt the presence of God. Okay, they thought that maybe it was okay. And watch this. I talked with people. They said, look, man. I got, to, I, I got to go to church, man. I got to get this Hank off of me. And for a long time, I didn't know what no Hank was. But I began to learn the conversation. Okay, they've been doing bad all this long time, and now it seems like everything they touch is turning to, 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 uh, to rust and whatever the case may be. Things are not going right, so they decide to go to church to try to get something broken off them. In other words, they, they're going by just to say hello to the Lord and say, I went to church and expect for God now to get them a clear path. It don't work like that. That's, you know, that's a religious spirit, and people have got caught up into those mechanisms uh, of that religiosity. So therefore, yes, you can feel the Spirit of God. Amen. We want to feel the Spirit of God, but it's nothing like being filled with the Spirit of God so that he can minister in us and then through us. Praise God. And this is so, so important. So praise God. Uh, so as Jesus, as Jesus had talked about the Holy Spirit, uh, talked about talked about the how that, um, uh, that the Holy Spirit is a comforter. Amen. He's a comforter. And he talked about the how he is the spirit of truth. And he also talked about how that, how that, um, how that he will show us things. A amen. He will show us things and, and, and he will guide us. And this is why it is so important for us to want it all. Not to get a partial of a Holy Spirit, not get peace of a Holy Spirit, but get it all. Get it all. Why? So that we can stand in the last and evil days. Yeah. Perilous times is among us. Yeah. And it seemed like the devil is winning. But I got news for you. The devil is not winning. God is winning. God have, God have children of his kingdom who haven't even bowed their knee to Baal. Right. And we are crying along with the angels of God saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, he is holy. Amen. Holy, holy is the Lamb of God. Amen. And we're crying out, Lord, if you can use anybody, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord God, use me. Hallelujah. Lord, strengthen me where I'm weak. Father, build me up where I'm torn down. Lord, I'm understanding this thing that you saved me, Father, Lord, not just to miss hell, Praise God, but you saved me also that I might do your bidding in this earth realm. Just as Jesus was walking in this earth realm, the word of God said that he went about doing good. Jesus began to heal the sick. He began to raise the dead. Jesus began to work miracles. Isn't that right? Amen. Notable signs, wonders, and miracles began to take place. Jesus turned water into wine. Amen. He healed a crooked hand. He healed a broken back. Jesus did it all. Why? Because the Spirit of God was upon him, and it stayed there. And the same Spirit that was upon Jesus, the same Spirit is upon us. And the Holy Ghost Ghost is want to, he's, praise God, he want us to just lose him. Amen. And let him go. Stop trying to handle the Holy Ghost. But lose him and let him go. And you'll be surprised, praise the Lord, that the Holy Spirit will begin to work in you. The Holy Spirit will begin to re reveal himself to you. He will begin to show you things to come. He will begin to cause you to prophesy. He will use you in miracles. He will use you in healing. He will use you in deliverance. He will use you in interpretation. Whatever the gifts of the Holy Ghost is, praise God, he will use you. All you got to do is just be a willing vessel. Lord, here I am. Fill me, Lord. 
Feel me, Lord. Feel me, Lord. And if we lift up Jesus, he will do the drawing. Isn't that right? And he will draw all men unto him. Praise God. And he will fill them with the Holy Ghost just as he did on the day of Pentecost. And there will be evidence of the, of, of the Holy Ghost. There will be evidence of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Not just getting feeling, praise God, and then go home and, and still go back to the same way. But no, but change take place. Change take place. And when we receive the Holy Spirit, then there's a time of teaching and training. Jesus said the Holy Spirit will teach us, right? He will teach us. He will guide us. There's a time of training that take place. And every elder that is in this house and deacons, they went through a time of training. And when you're training, praise God, it builds character. Glory be to the Lamb of God. And then, and, and then in the midst of it, then you know how to serve God people. You know how to yield to the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, when the Holy Spirit is in control, we're going to see the manifestation of the kingdom of God. They don't need El Gay. We need Holy Spirit. We need the Spirit of God. We need the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead that same spirit upon us. Yes. Amen? Yes. So that we can do the work of the ministry. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. And you talking about the harvest is, is plentiful right now? The harvest is plentiful. I was talking with my covenant brother down in Margate, uh, Bishop Elliot, on yesterday. Praise God. And he was just saying that, you know, people... People are wanting to come to the ministry and so forth and so on. Uh, people are getting in contact with them and say, you know, when this COVID thing is over with, praise God, I need to come inside the building. And, you know, just because, see, see now they're streaming. People, people, this is why we need to stream, Neil, to get the message out because people are wanting to hear the truth. They're wanting to hear the truth. And I'm telling you, this vaccine is not the answer. No, no y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. My safeness is not in the vaccine. And I'm not knocking anybody that would get it. I'm not. I'm not. But I'm telling you, that's not the answer. The answer is the Holy Spirit. He will lead, guide, aid, and assist. Now to him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all, we ask or thank according to the power that worketh in us. And to him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ throughout all ages, world without end. And everybody says, amen, amen, amen. Thank you for joining in with us. We bless you in Jesus' name.